It's Game On. Presented by Spectrum Sports. And a very pleasant good evening from the Stan Sheriff Center in Manoa, where it's a whiteout. It's also the final regular season match for the Rainbow Wahine as they take on longtime nemesis Long Beach State. And this is Game On, presented by Spectrum Sports for Rainbow Wahine Volleyball. Hi, everybody, and welcome to a Friday night edition of Rainbow Wahine Volleyball. I'm Scott. She's Lisa, he's Ryan, and what's riding on tonight's match, obviously, is a continuation of a 10-match winning streak for the Wahine, but more importantly, a win would give them the outright Big West Conference title. Well, I have to say that's pretty huge, actually, when you look at this team and where they've come from, and earlier in the season, they didn't even know after that uh, loss to UC Irvine where they were going to end up, but Long Beach State was actually a nemesis in their side when they took uh, a win against Cal Poly in Santa Barbara last week. More importantly, I think not only a conference title, but an opportunity to get that automatic bid into the NCAA tournament. They did clinch that though, however, last night by winning against CSO. And we take a look at some of the highlights, Amber IGD, boy, as Robin almost said, probably played their best match of the season the night ago. Well, they were just crisp, very fresh from their little week off, if you will. And here we see some highlights from Amber Ajidi. And I'll tell you what, she needs a highlight video. And Hawaii's blocking looking very strong. The last time CSUN and Hawaii played, CSUN actually outblocked Hawaii. They changed the script last night. Their blocking looked very solid, especially the wing blockers. Hawaii looking to re-establish uh, themselves at the net against the Long Beach State team tonight. And how about Noreen Yosia? What can you say about her? Well, you know, her distribution was so even last night. She just continues to get better and better. Her leadership by example, there, her defense, her blocking, her all-around game, she has just led by example all year long. And McKenna Ross, who's really coming on strong, feeling more and more comfortable as a six-rotation player, helping to lead the Wahine last night in kills, hit for a high percentage. She also will be a player that will have to have big numbers tonight. All right, let's take a look at the Big West Conference scoreboard. There you see Cal Poly uh, closing in on a sweep of UC Irvine and UCSB looking to get a sweep of Cal State Fullerton. The up-to-date standings as of right now in the Big West Conference. Really, that all that matters for Hawaii is win, and they have the outright title. If they, if they happen to falter against Long Beach State, they could end up in a tie with Cal Poly, but Hawaii as a tiebreaker, and that's why they have already gotten the automatic qualifier from the, uh, for the NCAA tournament. But so many things riding, not just a Big West championship, it's senior night. Hawaii still with hopes of getting into, well, not getting into the post, hosting the first and second round. There's a lot on the line. There's a lot, and there's a lot of family, and I understand that it's going to be a sellout crowd tonight. So there's a lot of emotions going on in this arena tonight. Yeah, and I think more importantly, I think for Hawaii, this is the last opportunity to get competition in before that NCAA tournament. They want to make sure uh, that they establish themselves as a team and as a contender going into the tournament, that they have confidence that there isn't any doubt going in that they are a top 20 team and that they deserve to be here in the Stan Share Center come uh, that e first weekend. I'm sorry, uh, an evening ago, we were concerned about the bye week are not so much concerned, just curious about how they would come out. I thought last night that was the most energetic I've seen that Wahine team maybe all season long. Well, they were definitely crisp. Again, the, the break, I think, really helped all the players. Sometimes just going away from it just a little bit. When you come back in, you're a lot more hungry. All righty. To find out more about tonight's big match, we'll be thrown over to the duel. They'll be calling the action, of course, Kanoa and Chris, guys. Thanks a lot, Scott. Yeah, Kanoa Leahy next to Chris McLaughlin. And uh, this feels familiar. Hawaii, Long Beach State, here at the Stan Sheriff Center on the TerraFlex, and they're expecting a sellout crowd. Athletics Director David Matlin was talking to us just a few moments ago, and he said, it is going to be a sellout. I don't know if he knows something that we <laughs> don't, if somebody's going to make sure that that is going to happen, but we are being told somewhere in the three to 400 ticket range still available. Maybe that allotment will be bought up. Either way, it is going to be filled here in the SSC. Uh, how fitting. It harkens back to the end of the men's season a year ago, uh, and here we are with the Rainbow Wahine on the verge of perhaps their first sellout since 2013. And it does make a difference as far as the match goes. And they become like the seventh player. They made a big difference, I thought, in the men's matches last spring. And I think the crowd will make a difference tonight. 
We shall see. That's right. It is a big match for a number of reasons. Hawaii has already clinched a share of the conference crown. They have already put themselves in position to get the automatic bid. But they have bigger aspirations here, and it has to do with the RPI, and they want to host. And so what is going to be required of Hawaii tonight to put themselves in the best position to possibly do that? Well, to put themselves in the best position, they need to win, very simply. Number two, they've got to win. Watch very carefully the scores of the other teams they mm. played this year, especially the ones that are in the top 25 RPI, like teams like UCLA, University of Washington, University of San Diego. Those teams' matches are absolutely crucial in determining Hawaii's uh, RPI. I don't think the RPI will move, in a worst-case scenario, more than a couple of spots. They might go to 14 in a worst-case scenario, maybe 15. They'll still, I think, remain in the top 16 before uh, you, know, you know at the end of the day next Saturday. It's also senior night, and this is a pretty <laughs> special group, right? A group that has traversed and bridged basically the two eras of head coaches, ending with that final year of the legendary Dave Shoji's run, and of course now here in year three of Robin Amo. This is a class that uh, saw that transition through and has grown over the course of that time and has seen the realization of Hawaii ascending once again to the top of the Big West Conference stack. Talk a little bit about just what this class that will be celebrated tonight is all about. Well, it's a very special class. You know, the only one that didn't play for Dave Shoji, I think, is uh, Bailey Choi. And uh, the other four played for both Dave Shoji and for uh, Robin Amo. And I think that they had a unique experience playing for two very different mm -hmm. styles of coaches. And they've all said to a, to a player how much they learned from both coaches and how, how great it was and an honor, what an honor was to play for both coaches. So I think it's going to be a really special night tonight when they say goodbye to 10,300 people of, of their best friends showing up tonight to say goodbye. And uh, I just think that um, it's going to be a very, very special night. Hawaii has five seniors, Long Beach three seniors. Uh, Long Beach has no junior class at all. That's right. They're filled with freshmen and sophomores. So experience vis-a-vis -vis the five seniors of Hawaii may play a factor in tonight's match. All right, well, briefly on Long Beach State, uh, it is no secret. They're playing their best volleyball of the season right now. They've yep. won four straight. They beat UC Santa Barbara and Cal Poly a week ago. They've won five of their last six. In fact, uh, what is Hawaii in for here with the beach on the other side? Well, they're in for a team that really is fighting for their lives. They want to play in the postseason is their real big uh, motivation. The NIVT get invited to that, but they won't get invited to that unless they win tonight. So they're, they're going to be playing very hard to beat Hawaii tonight. And Hawaii's got obviously a lot of motivation as well, trying to uh, secure that home uh, hosting spot for the first two rounds of the NC2A. And uh, it's going to be one heck of a match, I'll yeah. tell you. We're going to see bodies flying everywhere, playing as if it's their last match they'll ever play. I mean, all of that. <laughs> but when it comes down to it, it's Hawaii Long Beach State. So yeah. it's always a good one. And we just got word from general manager of the Stan Sheriff Center, Rich Sheriff. It is official. Tonight is a sellout for the first time since 2013. Rainbow Wahine Volleyball in front of a packed house filled to the rim here at the SSC. So buckle up, folks. Uh, you're in for a special night here under the Friday Night Lights. We'll see you at first serve. Let's send it back over to the corner crew. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Stick around when we come back. We're going to talk about the five seniors. But don't forget, you can catch the greatest plays, biggest blocks, and schedule info by following Spec Sports High on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And welcome back. There you see them, the five seniors playing their final regular season home match. Hopefully we'll be back on the Terraflex in a couple of weeks away, taking on Long Beach State. And of course, all five of those seniors playing in that final home match, but each one of them has left uh, a mark of their own on the program. That core group has worked hard during the, the summer just to be where we're at right now. You know, they, they, they got the culture going. The freshmen that came in or whoever came in, they're, they're buying in on the culture that they set, you know, that we all set as a, as a team. I feel like as soon as I got here, they were the group of girls that I really like connected to besides the people I came in with. They're so fearless and like, just so compassionate. They bring out the best in us. They're a really special group of girls. I don't, I don't think they realize how much of an impact they have on this team right now. They have been a huge part of our team, uh, for sure. I think they're just, they're great players. They're great role models in terms of 
attitude and just effort and uh, yeah it's definitely a loss that they're leaving um, and I had so much fun playing with them. Well here you see Rico Aquino the senior out of well actually she's a junior but she's graduating uh, out of Kalani High School there you see what she has done throughout her career has had a very good final season as a Rainbow Wahine here's the coach on Rika. Rika too man. she's so quiet the first time I came when we're in club gym I'm like I'm only keeping the DS liberos who can talk I need you to talk I need you to run my backcourt and my passing if you can't do that you're out of here and yeah, she just stepped it up. We haven't had a libero in the beginning part of the season, but we ended up using, you know, a libero and she's our number one right now. And I think she's doing an awesome job. Kirsten Sibley, the senior out of Lafayette, California, had a season high four kills, hit 500 in last night's match. There you see what she's done throughout her career as a Rainbow Wahine. Here's more by Robin. Sibby does, you know, 180. The first, the first year I came in, I go, oh, man, Sib, you like out of shape. And she's awesome. Like, attitude is awesome. She's in shape. She's not one of our best runners. I mean, I don't know if it's about the culture and like what she, but she's, you know, she grew up and she's a totally different person. Love her attitude in the gym, you know, whether she plays or doesn't. She's a like awesome team player. McKenna Ross out of Liso Viejo, California, the senior, came into the program uh, as a defensive specialist, but that changed pretty quickly in her freshman year. She's back on the outside and making a huge impact this year. More from Coach Robin. Rossi came in and Dave recruited her as a DS in the and she's one of our starting hitters, which is, that's like an awesome story by itself. I couldn't just make her a DS in the like she hits the ball, she has a heavy arm, she loves playing, like her energy and what she gives, her fight is awesome. Well, ba Bailey Choi won the comeback home, spent three years at the University of Utah, graduated, had another year. She called Robin, Robin said, come on down. And uh, she's very happy that Bailey decided to come back home. She's made an impact here in her one season in Manoa. And uh, Robin has nice things to say about Choi. I've known Bailey for, you know, since Dream's age. When she got on the portal and she's, she wants to come home, I'm like, sure, we'll find a spot for you somewhere, you know? And I love the way she plays. She has a lot of heart. She's almost like a perfectionist. She has to be like, no, I want it like this. Okay, I have to do it. And it's just like, okay, I need more reps. I need more reps. She came, she was in shape. She bought in, knowing that that was still, you know, Noreen, which is obviously a really good player as well. And I think them two are like kind of good friends. And how about Noreen Yossi of Torrance, California, was one of the top high school setters in the country first two years. She did set last year, was asked to set and hit, did quite well. This year was looking at a 6-2, but because of injury, has gone back to being a setter and hitter. And uh, she's just one of the best all-around players the Rainbow Wahine have ever had. And Robin's very proud of her. First day we coming in and I'm just like, oh, I don't even know if she's gonna last with me. I'm glad she stayed. It was hard for her. She has grown up and I am so proud of her. Like all the stuff that she, you know, went through with her friend and just coming back. I guess wanting to do good. Obviously she's taking the role of like, okay, coach, yes, I was hit again, you know, this year and she's taking it and she's running with it. Hashtag what? Not now for hashtag what? Brought to you by First Hawaiian Bank. Ladies go first. So Lisa, give me your hashtag on this senior class. Well, when I think about this team, I think about hashtag Ho'omau. This team is persistent. They are resilient. They are tenacious, if you will. They have been through so much, but they continue to learn, to move forward, and to persevere in their efforts as a team. And that is exactly why I called it hashtag Ho'omau. And for me, I went with the hashtag, uh, alluding similar to what Kanoa and Chris were talking about just moments ago, uh, hashtag final five. This is the final five class 
uh, of Dave Shoji in his role as a head coach before he retired and Robin took over. Of course, Bailey Shoji is not a part of that class, uh, but this five really represents uh, the new tradition, the new era of Robin Amo and her class. From here on out, all the players are, are all Robins. And so this class has a very unique distinction of being that final five, that last group that came from Dave Shoji and was able to oversee uh, both of these coaches and the transition this program has made. Uh, I think it's significant when you note uh, the way and the trajectory in which this class has really helped carry this program back to what it was. Yeah, and you know, Ryan, kind of building on that point, Robin talked about how this year she walked in the gym for practice in day one and everybody had already done what was needed. These seniors, they're the ones that have, have established that, that tradition that Robin wants to build, that, you know, that thing to get them going. Well, I think that they've, they've all grown so much and she's been allowed to take them under her wing and change a little bit of their thinking and she's establishing, like she calls it, the culture of this team and she's kind of allowed them now to help teach and train the younger players as well. And you know one of the requirements for this team is that everyone has to run a mile under a certain time and if not you can't practice at the beginning of the season and then the prior, prior two seasons a lot of these players didn't make that mile timeline. This year all the players made it and I think it goes and it speaks to the level of commitment that this team now has. And the senior class also wants to move on in the NCAA tournament. We'll see See what happens in a couple of weeks. But tonight, there you see Nick Rolovich. He's got a championship game going on on Aloha Stadium tomorrow night against San Diego State. But tonight, it's Hoy battling the beach of Long Beach State. And there you see Nick Rolovich showing his support to Robin Amo as the Rainbow Wahine get ready to take on Long Beach State. Rolo and his boys will be jumping on a bus in a couple of minutes, heading to the hotel, getting ready for their West Division Championship tomorrow night. All right, let's take a look at some of the senior leaders for the Rainbow Wahine. And of course, Noreen Yosia, the player that does it all for Hawaii. You can see there her stats continue to increase as she etches her name in the UH history books. McKenna Ross also having a great season so far. That hitting percentage continues to climb as she continues her hot streak. And we'll see if we'll see some more of Kirsten Sibley. We saw a little bit of her last night. All right, for Long Beach State, Lisa. Well, Long Beach State's just incredibly defensive, but their go-to girl is Shoshana Williams, who's hit over 412 kills this year. Very explosive, only a sophomore. And of course, their middle blocker, Zoo, having a great year, another senior on the team. But this Long Beach State team, I'll tell you, very explosive and very defensive. Now, these two teams met way back on September 27th. It was the first conference match of the season. Also, Hawaii had been on the road for a while. If you remember, they went to Waco, played Missouri and Baylor the week before. So they did not play their greatest, but they played well enough to win. Yeah, and it was a different Long Beach State team that was going through some injuries. They've had some personnel switches and they're playing better. So these numbers really don't reflect the team that we're going to see here tonight. You see that hitting percentage by Long Beach at 152. Hawaii's going to want to try to keep that hitting percentage down for Long Beach and increase theirs. You can see Hawaii actually out blocking 49ers 10 to 8. Time now to say what? Brought to you by Bank of Hawaii. I want you guys to say what about tonight's match. What does Hawaii need to do to pull out the win, to get the W? Well, I think they have to play a lot like they did last night. They have to put their pedal to the metal early on and keep it down. But I think their serving is going to be critical and also set distribution, moving it around so that they don't get predictable. I think they have to control their emotions. I mean, you have to look at Hawaii's lineup. They have a lot of freshmen, a lot of players out there who are not used to playing in front of 10,000 people. And while it's great to have that support, sometimes the emotion can, can overtake just your overall abilities and what you're supposed to be doing to the game plan. I think they have got to stay focused and not necessarily let this energy get out of control where they're unable to execute their game plan. Who really needs to step up, uh, step up tonight for Hawaii? That's a great question. I think Hawaii's middles really have to perform well. Um, and I thought they did a great job last night. Again, I think Hawaii's strength is if they can get that first contact, whether it's a serve or the pass, get your middles established er early so that you can open up your outside hitters. And for me, I think it's the outside. So Hawaii features two smaller outside hitters in Brooke Van Sickle and McKenna Ross. I think those two players are going to be crucial. They have got to pass more than the offensive numbers that they put forward. Those two players are going to get served a lot of balls. They have to make sure that they pass first before they think about their offensive threats. And I would imagine confidence won't be a problem for Long Beach State. 
They're coming off victories over UCSB and Cal Poly last weekend. They're feeling very good about their chances, I'm sure. Oh, they are. It's amazing. Even their uniforms breed confidence. All black with the high knees up all the way up. They come in and their warm-ups, they are just banging balls left and right. It should be fun. It's Hawaii, Long Beach State. The three of us will be back when this one's popped. And outside here to find ninth June from Battleground, Washington. Number two, Brooke Van Sickle! And middle blocker, 6'3 freshman from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Number three, Amber IG! And middle blocker, 6'1", junior from Bellflower, California. Number eight, Skyler Williams. <laughs> and center and outside hitter, 5'11", senior from Torrance, California. Floor captain, number 10, Doreen. Lee Barrow, 5'5", five, five, junior from Honolulu. Number 16, Rika Okino. And outside hitter, 6'2", freshman from Lidinger, Stockholm, Sweden. Number 17, Hannah Helby. That outside hitter, 5'10", senior, from Aliso Viejo, California. Number 20, McKenna Ross. The Hawaii staff director of operations, Faith Maafala. Volunteer assistant, Puna Kanijo. Assistant coach, Kaleo Baxter. Associate coach, Angelica Yukvist. Head coach for your Rainbow Wahine, Robin Amo. It took the Rainbow Wahine just 84 minutes to sweep CSUN last night, ensuring at least a piece of the Big West Championship, a first for third-year head coach Robin Amo. Tonight, Hawaii will honor its five seniors in front of a packed Stan Sheriff Center in hopes of claiming the conference crown all to itself. On senior night, Big West nemesis Long Beach State looks to play spoiler against the Hawaii Rainbow Wahine. And with that, we welcome you inside a sold-out Stan Sheriff Center. Let's take a look at the Kaiser Permanente keys to the match, Chris. Well, for the Beach, they've got to ride the wave. They're on a four-match win streak with two significant wins over Cal Poly and UCSB, and they have injured players returning to help ride that wave. And for Hawaii, is hosting an incentive? I think so. I think the, the prospects of hosting the first two rounds of the NC2 A's is a huge motivation watch for some extra adrenaline on the UH side of the net, fueled by the capacity crowd tonight. Oh, there is some energy flowing through this building right now. Kanoa Leahy here courtside next to Chris McLaughlin and Noreen Yosia, one of the seniors who will be honored at the conclusion of this match tonight, who was already starting to show some emotion during the introductions with the serve. Hawaii and Long Beach State, and it is the beach striking first, specifically Eri Shua, the 6'4 senior from Nanjing, China. As we take a look at the Hawaiian Financial FCU starting lineup scrolling at the bottom of your screen. Long Beach State coming in 12 and 15 overall, 9 and 6 in the Big West Conference, but they have without a doubt been playing their best volleyball of the year here in the last several weeks. Outside, the set goes to Hana Helvi, and that was too hot to handle as Hawaii gets on the board here early in this first set. In fact, the Beach have won four straight, and that includes wins over UCSB and Cal Poly in their last two outings. The win over the Mustangs was in four sets on their senior night last weekend. 
Big swing there by Kashana Williams, and that is a flash of her athleticism. She has boosters off of the Terraflex, and she rips it off the block and out. And she's got a heavy arm to boot. Both teams showing some big offense so far. Both teams passing well. Well, what he on the other side, 23 and three with that sweep win over CSUN last night. They've won 10 straight, 13 and two. And in first place of the Big West Conference, they have already clinched a share of the crown. They'd love to wear the crown by themselves if they can come out with a victory tonight. And Amber Igidi starting off well, the freshman from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Green, you'll see it unafraid to get that middle established early on, set up her pin hitters for later on. Igidi hitting 364 on the year, entered this week third in the Big West Conference in kill percentage. And I had an ace last night from the service line. She gets the serve here and comes up with the dig there on the swing by Shua. From the back row, it's Brooke Van Sickle. And she gets it by the block of the beach. We've seen a rerun from last night, and Amber IG was a back row wizard. I mean, check this out. That was a hard smack there by Shua, and IGD on her knees was able to get it up. Nice little bump set from Yosia as well. So Hawaii up three, serving two. The outside swing by Katie Kennedy is blocked back. She gets another stab at it. The soft touch pinballed around. And Helvig slaps it across. There's IGD again defensively. Middle set goes to Sky Williams. And she catches it flush. I love the way Noreen Yosia is unafraid to set the ball from the eight or nine foot line, holding the other team's middle blocker for as long as possible. So four serving two, and Amber Igidi again to serve. Two aces on the year. She is the team's leading blocker, one of the best blockers in the conference. Shua, that one will not be dug up. And Ari Shua getting a lot of action here early as she conjures up her second kill, and now she'll retreat back to serve. Last time she had nine kills in the loss to Hawaii way back in September. She's a force at the net, great blocker, her leading blocker, and she gets two and a half kills a set. Yeah, She's already got two kills this set, and only seven points into it. Yeah, hit 389 against Hawaii the first time around. That was back in September, the first conference match for both teams. Layout saved there by Brooke Van Sickle. High ball bump set goes to McKenna Ross. Dug up along the back line by Shua. They go slide, and that is blocked back. In fact, they're going to say that that didn't actually get above the tape. And so that is a point for Hawaii. Either way, you slice it. Kirsty Norville from Tonsberg, Norway. The senior with the swing for the beach there. And it's five serving three with Bailey Choi. Yet another one of the seniors to be celebrated tonight behind the service line. What a get she has been here. A one and done -er, if you will, for the Rainbow <laughs> Wahine program. A grad transfer from Utah. Outside, and that is a big-time swing there by Katie Kennedy, just a freshman, part of this crop of youngsters for this Long Beach State program that certainly projects well going forward. Absolutely. And they've got a, a great center coming in next year. I think the number two center in the country. Two-hand pass there by McKenna Ross. Middle set goes to Sky Williams. Tried to go hard angle. It's chased down, and it will be returned. Advantage Hawaii, it's Williams in the middle. And she pounds it home. And flashes that signature smile in the process. Hawaii's transition offense from going from defense to offense, very sharp right now. It's sharp last night as well. Hawaii peaking at the right time. You're looking at the top hitter in terms of kill percentage in the conference right there in Skyler Williams. Hawaii by two. The right side set. Kennedy is sniffed out. It'll be returned. Long Beach once again goes to Kennedy from the opposite position. Didn't get it flushed, so Choi with the save. Here's Van Sickle rising high. And an elation one cross court and in. Brooke Van Sickle at 5'7", maybe 5'8 on a good day. Goes up against a couple of six-foot blockers and goes right inside with that great leaping ability of hers. And good wrist away swing. So seven serving four. Hawaii coming off of that sweep win last night against CSUN. It was arguably, and even Robin Almo attested to this, their best all-around, most efficient and cleanest performance 
of the season. And that one is ripped home by Tia Shavira. You talk about a good looking freshman. She has battled some shoulder and arm issues this season. But she is the reigning Big West Conference overall player and freshman of the week. Shoulder looked pretty good there, didn't it? Coming it off. certainly did, packing a punch. 16 kills last week against Santa Barbara. Or 14 kills and 16 kills against Cal Poly. She is looking sharp, has changed this offense of the beach. Brooke Van Sickle has done the same, certainly, since she has returned back to the starting rotation for the Rainbow Wahine. I see Seth and Bailey Choi and Brooke Van Sickle again going high and over that big block. Brooke starting off three for three offensively, and here is Rika Okino with the serve. Outside set goes to Williams, caught it fat. Was there a touch up front? Yes, there was. So the point goes to the beach. Kashana Williams, third in the Big West Conference in kills. 4.1 kill, uh, kills per set, hitting 249. Just a sophomore was Big West Conference all freshman team last year. He likes to go by the nickname Cash Money. How about that? <laughs> That was a pretty money hit. Well, Cash Money wasn't able to cash in on that overpass. And then Mourinho see him. So Bailey Choi put her hands up there, but she was not a blocker. She stayed on the ground. Mourinho was pretending that she was an illegal blocker up front. But what a bump kill. That's right. Give the BK to Noreen, and here she is now to serve, nine serving six. And that's an ace. Noreen Yosia with her 38th ace of the season, and that one prompts a Long Beach State timeout. So Hawaii in front of this sellout crowd, starting off well in set one. Welcome back. Series record sponsored by Aqua Aston Hospitality. Hawaii leading the all-time series, 36-18-1. And, and boy, have they had some battles. The last one, September 27th, it was the first conference match for both teams. And Hawaii winning in Long Beach in four sets. They lead by four here in set one. And you'll see it goes into the net. That was a rarity last night for Hawaii. Just three service errors as a team. And that was part of the reason why it was such an efficient overall performance. I mean, they were good in just about every facet, but from the service line, they were so sharp. Not sharp there, though, as it results in a free chance here for Long Beach. Shua off the fingertips of the block, diving save there, Ross. Here's Helvig winding up, uncoiling, but it's dug up nicely in the back row by Long Beach State. Diving play there by Okino. Fidgeting around with it is the beach, so Hawaii with the advantage. Here's Van Sickle, cross court and in. That violation called against Long Beach State. It doesn't matter, point for the Rainbow Wahine. See by Nourinho Sia, sitting in the middle early on. Bailey Choi sets up the ball for Van Sickle, and Van Sickle is facing a split block. Middle blocker couldn't get there in time. They were so worried about Amber Igini. So 11 serving seven, here it comes from Van Sickle. Beach out of system. The swing from the back row by Shavira is dug up. Backside, it's healthy from off the net, goes up over the block and just beyond that end line. And Robin Amo contemplating the challenge, shrugs her shoulders, asks her coaches for some feedback, and they say, let's leave it alone for now. Ooh, I don't think there was a touch, but the ball might have been in. Is the serve. Tough pass there by Van Sickle. McKenna Ross took a little something off there. Shavira, the two-hand save. Outside, it's Kennedy. Tools the block. And Long Beach State with the point. Yeah, it's so strategic, right? The idea of, hey, it was pretty early in a match that had the potential to go deep into the evening. Do you want to use a challenge card that early? In that particular instance, Robin Amo elected not to go there. You'll see a backside. Here's Helvey. Touched it over. Diving layout save there by Agner Swayze, the setter. Good save by Okino. Here's Van Sickle coming and swooping in for the put down. Brooke Van Sickle. Hot, hot, hot. Five kills, no errors. Hitting the thousand. 
Big by like Okito to keep this rally going. Boy, has she improved this year. Yeah, she has had a phenomenal 2019 campaign. Had 10 digs last night against the Matadors. It would be tough to dig that one. And that one came sharply off the palm of Ari Shua. Hitting 350 on the year. Also good from the service line. Second on the team with 22 aces. And you see the numbers from the first meeting against the Lady Bulls. All Big West three years in a row. You'll see it chases down the set. Here's Ross off the block. Good up off the ricochet there by Helvig. Ross from off the net was able to place that one perfectly up in front of that end line. And her parents in the house, they're loving it. How did she manage that one facing a big block? Here's a block that was covered by Helvig. And then Ross just goes high and over and down. Good swing. And here is Bailey Choi. Loaded it over, easy pickings on the pass. It's Williams from the back row, and she sends it long. No touch up front, so an unforced hitting error that time for Kashana Williams in Hawaii with the 14 to 10 serve here. I wonder how much that heavily bandaged right hand bothers her when she swings. Hard to get some of that English on it, right? Here's the slide. And that one dug up by Okino. Joust at the net, and it's going to be won by Long Beach State. The ball drifted a little bit more over to the beach's side, and the setter, Carly Egner Swayze, 5'8 sophomore from Wrightwood, California, was able to find the floor. Setters love it when they get an open net like that, get a chance to get a kill. You might recognize the last name, twin sister Sawyer. Plays for UCLA as McKenna Ross just demolishes that one. There has been something extra to her this last weekend, huh? Especially last night. She looked so sharp last night. Everything she's touched turned to gold. Seems to be jumping a little bit higher. The coaches saying that in practice, she was beasting. And then Sickle on a pogo stick just taps it over. Bump set goes right side. It's Kennedy blocked back. The cover there by Agner Swayze. <laughs> How about a little ping pong match above the tape? Chavira took something off. The one hand save Van Sickle. Last moment reaction there by Okino, and we play on. Outside, Chavira blocked. Henry Yosil and Sky Williams saying a ole in front of a sellout crowd. There's, there's going to be a challenge from. Coach Joy on the block, in or out. Joy McKenzie Furbringer, third season atop the program. So fitting that you have former legendary setters with these respective programs that are now running these respective programs, and she's going to challenge, I believe, the in-out call off the block. It actually landed right in front of her, so she had a pretty good look at it, and that's why she pulled the card so quickly. Take a look here and see if there's anything to think differently. Yeah, she's right, right on, on top line. of that, but it looks like it lands smack dab on the white. Yep, that's definitely on the line. It, I don't think this call is going to get overturned. Dixon Chun reviewing things. He is the R2. Patsy Malta once again atop the ladder. She's the R1. Randy Rubinal, Dean Tamura, the two line judges. Does that angle change anything for you, C-Max? It doesn't for Dixon Chun. And that's ultimately all that matters. Hawaii gets the point. And they're up a handful here in set one. Well, the block came alive for Hawaii, certainly against the Matadors last night. They went double figures again as a team, 10 blocks, and Sky Williams had six of them. Ross floats it deep. Back bump set goes to Shavira. Two-hand save, Choi. What an effort there by Okino. The beach now with the advantage. They go middle set. Kirsty Norville's dug up outside. It's Van Sickle blocked in roof. Norville getting her palms on it. What a dig by Rico Okino, keeping the ball alive there. And then the block by the beach that time, just too big. Set a little bit tight inside. And you can't do that against the 
big beach block like that. Marvo coming off of a career effort in that win over Cal Poly that we mentioned on senior night. 13 kills, a career high. Hit 591 and had eight blocks in that match against the Mustang. Here's Yosia against that big block, rolled it over. Shavira the save. And then it is Williams denied solo style by the senior Noreen Yosia. Here's another interesting side story. Yosia coached as a youngster by Joy Furbringer McKenzie, the Long Beach State coach. The two of them shared some hugs before the, the match tonight. Uh, nice little side story. Yeah, McKenzie Furbringer saying, tell Robin Almoshi to thank you for helping to mold <laughs> Noreen into the setter that she is today. Of course, saying that tongue in cheek, but there was a lot of affection there because she was one of Noreen's very first volleyball coaches. Uh, and what a luxury to go from one legendary setter, of course, Joy putting together quite a career for Long Beach State back in her playing days, and then playing for Robin Amo, one of the great setters, really, of all time. And Dave shows you another setter. <laughs> there you go. Here's Bailey Choi, goes middle to Amber IGD, and she drops the hammer. Thoughts on the way of well, what he's playing here so far, C-Man? Well, I love the transition play. You know, they're really short. Balls aren't being passed too far over the net. Looks like Columbia State's going to call another timeout. Hawaii, 5-5 five, five, here in set one. Let's go inside the numbers presented by Heineken, 398. That was Hawaii's hitting percentage last night versus CSUN, the highest since November 16th of 2017 when they went above the 400 mark, 402 at UC Davis. So yes, a season high hitting percentage and Hawaii not doing too bad here so far this evening either. How about 393? <laughs> about 150 points above their normal average. We'll see it to serve out of the timeout. Good pass there by Haley Harward. The block is up by Van Sickle and she returns it to sender all by herself. And another stuff at the net here for the Bows. The Rainbow Roofing Company in full effect so far here in set one. Kirk Van Sickle, five kills, one air hitting 500 and a block solo. Garcia forces the overpass. Van Sickle, much obliged, thank you. And that's a 3-0 burst here for the Rainbow Wahine. They're up seven, largest lead of this opening frame. You see Van Sickle turn around there with a smile. They celebrated at the net. She forgot to thank Yosia for the great serve. Harward handles it that time. They go backside, it's Shavira, dug up to the net by Ross, and then placed down with two hands by Kashana Williams. Williams from Los Angeles, California. The Bell Camino Real Charter. Also competed in basketball and track and field in high school, and she also an alum of club volleyball for head coach Joy McKenzie Furbringer. Here's Van Sickle, the touch shot. That one sniffed out by Agner Swayze. And then it's Williams again. Did that one get blocked? No, it didn't get above the tape. And so, either way, you slice it a point for Hawaii. And they're closing in here in the latter parts of set one. And who else? Uh, Williams was recruited by Penn State, SC. Oh, and number one Baylor. <laughs> Not a bad bunch of schools yeah. to, to want you. She had some choices. Decided to stay a little closer to home. Here she is winding up and is able to tool the block. Just sort of pushed that one past Hana Helvig that time. Surprised that shot. I guess she was trying to wipe it off the edge of one of the outside blockers. Uh, Helvig there, but. Well, she should just unload every time, I think. She's got such a heavy arm. So here is Nicole Hoff, yet another freshman out of Millennium High School in Arizona with the serve. High and away, the set goes to Ross, goes above the block and down right in front of that end line. And McKenna Ross is locked in here for a third kill and six swings, blemish free. Ross knows she's got a big block in front of her, so she's really hitting at the top of her jump and extending her arm before hitting it with a lot of top spin going over blocks. Trying to catch that back line. Good serve there by Kyra Hanawahine. Shua down the line. And she is a Shua thing right now for Long Beach State offensively. It is 16 serving 22 here in the first. And she will retreat back 
Yes, sir. Two or four kills already. She averages two, so she's doubling her normal production on offense. Having a good night this far. Crowd turning up the volume knob a bit. Get passed by Van Sickle. Ross comes flying in. The cover there by Yosia. Bumps it Okino to Ross. The touch shot, and easy pickings defensively, but a little joust above the tape. And then Yosia places it perfectly. Let's see, we call that a set kill. So she's had a bump kill. She's had now a set kill. She's about to complete the trifecta. Yeah. <laughs> so alert, such great volleyball IQ. Knows where everybody is on the court. All 12 players, she knows where everybody is. The senior savvy of Noreen Yosia. Pass tight to the net and off of one leg. That one pounded down. By Kirsty Norville. Has been injury plagued throughout her Long Beach State career. The last three seasons, in fact, really has been limited so much. And so just the fact that she's out there here as a senior, that's worthy of recognition. Williams, oh, she tried to go atop the mountain against Norville, and that time Norville was able to dominate the exchange. That set just a little bit low. I think that uh, Sky Williams can take that ball a little higher and maybe do more with it. So 18 serving 23. Choi goes middle to Williams, went right back to Sky in the middle, and that time Sky didn't catch it flush, but was able to find the floor. I like that repeat set. Go right back to the player that just got blocked. The other team thinks you're going to go to somebody else. Instead, repeat it to the player who just got made an error. So that it is now Aloha Ball here in set one. And McKenna Ross to serve, goes deep corner. And that's a point for Hawaii. A moment of indecision on the side of the beach. And Hawaii strikes first in the match. 25-18, they'll swap sides. 1-0, home team. This presentation of Rainbow Wahine Volleyball is sponsored by Bank of Hawaii and Hawaii Honda Dealers. Ah, the senior smiles. It is senior night, a special occasion for sure. And Ryan Kalei-Suji is in this packed crowd somewhere. What you got, Ryan? That's right, I'm probably with one of the most athletic families here in the Stan Chair Center, the Rosses. We're gonna start with Jason Ross, father of McKenna Ross. You played here at the University of Hawaii. What has this experience been like for you to see your daughter playing for your alma mater? You know, it's been a crazy experience. It's, it's uh, seeing her doing her thing, and I was here my years past. It's just uh, a real great feeling, great feeling. And this family's so athletic. They have an Olympic gold medalist, uh, McKenna's older sister, Kyla, who competed in the London Olympics, won gold with Team USA. What has this experience been like for you to be able to see your sister here? Uh, first time here at the Stan Sheriff Center. What has this experience been like for you? Uh, I've watched so many of her games on TV, so to finally be able to come here and see it in person with this amazing crowd and this community here in Hawaii has been amazing. And finally, uh, Mom Kian over here, your sister Nohiatano played here. Uh, such an athletic family. What has this uh, experience been like to you to see your daughter here and uh, just continuing in this legacy? Yeah, this ride she's taken us on, watching her live her dream has been amazing. Well, thank you all. Congratulations to all of you too. We'll send it back over to you guys. Thanks a lot, Ryan. Yeah, that is a talented family right there and certainly a closely knit family. And enjoying the show here so far. But what you putting on a show in that first frame, C Mac. How about how about McKenna Ross? Three kills hitting 375. Yep to make an error. How about Brooke Ben Sickle? Six kills, one error, hitting 500. Hawaii hitting 389 overall. Great offensive first first uh, set. Well defensively, Kirsty Norville by KJ for the most part among her teammates. She was able to defensively make her presence felt in that first set. Does so again on the opening point of set two, denying access to Amber Ijidi. Ijidi fields the serve. High ball bump set goes to Van Sickle. She's blocked back the cover there by Yosia. Bump set Okino to Noreen. And Harvard guarding the back line. It's going to be a violation, a double hit call against the beach. So Hawaii gets a freebie here to start things off in set number two. Hawaii coming in ranked 18th in the latest ABCA poll. The 
They're listed as 12th in the latest ratings percentage index. Of course, that's the really important ranking system as we approach Selection Sunday. I mean, most projections have them actually moving up to number 11 in part because of last night's win against CSUN. A little mixing up at the top there with Marquette losing as well as Brooke Van Sickle slices that one thin. That is kill number seven for Brooke. That may be the play of the night right there. Bump set from way back in the deep in the backcourt. And Van Sickle is slicing it. I think it was inside the premier line, wasn't it? <laughs> Big players can't do that, let alone a 5'7". That's right. Oh, and that's an ace. Mourinho Sia points the index finger down to the Terraflex to recognize yet another ace in her storied career. She goes back to back. And a timeout called by Long Beach State at 4-1 second. Welcome back to tonight's Jack Fact. Hawaii peaking at the right time. Currently on a 10 match winning streak. Their second of the season in fact. The last time the Rainbow Wahina had a longer streak was in 2016 when they won 11 in a row and they were still head coached by that guy right there. And then Dave showed you. And how about that? Back to back to back. The hat trick for Noreen Yosia. Maureen is feeling it, to be sure. And when she feels it, watch her move her serves around. I think she'll serve this one down the line of Cristiano Williams just to move things around. Might even be off speed. That is four service aces in this match already for Yosia. Forces an overpass there. Sets up Helvig, no blockers up, but she couldn't put it down. Oh, but it winds up down as Long Beach State couldn't conjure up a second touch. Did you see the off speed serve to Cristiano Williams? Not to say I told you so, but she has a way of, of uh, mixing up her serves that makes her so effective when she brings the heat. You see a closing in on associate coach Angelica Jungquist to replace her on the all-time aces list for Hawaii. And that is ace number five here this evening. Noreen Yosia is going bananas from the service line. That's more aces, I think, than you had in your whole career. I'm not sure. <laughs> Is that what Barry say? Well, it's more aces than are available in a deck of cards. We know that. <laughs> That's true. Nice call. And that one ties her with Angelica Jungquist for fourth all time. And she sends it long, showing a glimpse of humanity. But she gets the appropriate response from this sellout crowd anyway. 10,250 clap. There's 50 beach fans here. I'm not sure that they are applauding Marine's performance there. Just special. How about the layout? One-handed pass there by Igidi and her fellow Frosch, Helvig, able to cap the play, finding that deep corner. Give Igidi the dig of the night right there. You don't see middle blockers go lay out like that, do you? That's a great play by Amber Igidi. We've seen, 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 we've seen it all from her the last couple of nights, haven't we? I mean, are we about to see here in the evolution of Amber IGD perhaps a six rotation middle at some point? Yeah, we could. Shavira, the touch shot. Easy pickings there defensively for Helvey. High ball set goes to Ross. Two handed in the air in the back row there by Dylan Dela Cruz, but nobody would return it for Long Beach State. Another instance of indecision. And right now, the beach appears to be shell-shocked a little bit, C-Mac. Yeah, they're, they're not playing the normal beach volleyball they played last weekend, for example, when they really handled Cal Poly in Santa Barbara. And the pass off the net, bump set. Williams, well, she is at times the great equalizer, even off of a scramble play, even when things are a bit rocky. She usually is able to right the ship. Exactly, she's got... Uh, such a good arm swing. Hits the ball so hard that she, as you say, can make a broken play look good. Well, and Igidi laid out but wasn't able to pop that one up that time. Give the ace to Tia Shavira from San Bernardino, California. A two-time All-CIF first teamer. Over 1,200 career kills 
at Aquinas High School. And she's made such a difference in this team in their four-match winning streak. Yeah, she has been a bit of a game changer here for the beach, and she goes back to back from the service line. And Long Beach State back within four. Three-oh run here. This is a tough floater. Beach. A tough floater. Ball doesn't get very high over the net. Here she brings the off speed. Backside, it's Helvig. And we're gonna have a net violation called against Hawaii. Doreen Yosia bumped into the net when she set that ball. And that forces Hawaii to signal for a timeout. We saw an early one from Long Beach State, a relatively early one from Robin Amo as well. Welcome back. Let's check out the first Hawaiian Bank top three. We're looking at Big West team blocks in Hawaii. This is part of their sort of redefined self here in 2019 as they are at the top of the stack in the conference. Another tough serve there by Shavira. McKenna Ross from off the net. Easy dig there for Harwood. Outside it's Williams. High velocity layout by Van Sickle, and it winds up in the seats. Another point for Long Beach State. That is now five straight. And after being down 9-2, they are right back in the mix. That's what makes this rivalry so great. Neither team will give up. Both teams are scrappy. What you trying to get a side out here. Helvey goes off the hands. One hand save Harward. Tapped over by Williams. It's middle. It's IGD. The tip shot. Pancake save Agnes Swayze. Another free chance here for Hawaii. Aquino has to come over and take on the setting responsibilities. Ross is blocked back. You'll see of the cover. Aquino goes cross court now to Helvig. And she blasts it off the fingers of the block and out. And Hawaii finally able to get out of that sticky rotation. Nice pancake up there by Edna Swayze. Helvey just smashing it, just punishing the hands of the block. Four kills now for Hana Helvey. Hana Wahine with a tough serve. Shavira had to lay flat out just to return that one. And the set in the middle mistimed and miscommunicated. So now an opportunity here for the beach. It's Williams up the ladder. And she blasts it through the whole Hawaii block. That was almost an angry swing. She's just, I think she's not happy with how she's played so far. So the last couple of swings have been all about, hey, watch what I can do when I get my timing right, get my swing right, and get the right set. So watch me. Cash Money doing pretty well statistically. Seven kills hitting 364. Eight serving 10 here in set two. Pass by Ross. Middle set, it's Williams. Found that opening along the back line. So Sky Williams continues her efficient offensive effort. Kill number four for her on seven attempts. On a good, on a good pass, I think. Watch for Long Beach to go back to Shua. The 6-4 middle. But not that time. Yeah, they go outside instead to Kennedy, and she's blocked in roof. Sky Williams next to Marine Yosia. And give Hawaii its fourth team block of the match so far. Sky Williams, second on the team in blocks, averaging 1.08 per set, sixth best in the conference. Here's Shua, the tip shot. Nice reaction there by Ross. Quick reset, in fact. She's blocked back. Good cover, Okino. Now a free chance here for the beach. Can they cash in? They go outside. It's Kennedy blocked and roofed again. Sky Williams right now eclipsing the sun here against Long Beach State up front. And the coverage by Okino to keep that rally alive. Give Hawaii another swing and give Hawaii just block another chance to earn a point. 13 serving eight. From the back row, Shavira is dug up by Okino and sent back across. Oh, Shavira zigged when Agner Swayze thought she would zag. Now Hawaii with the chance. You'll see his tip shot is sniffed out. Shavira, no blockers up, and she hits it long. And once
once again, Hawaii with some breathing room here at 14, serving eight. They've ripped off four in a row. And now we're going to have a substitution here for the beach as Avery Nelson, the junior from Colorado Springs, comes in to replace the freshman Katie Kennedy. Nelson has played in 32 sets this year, averaging 2.6 kills per. Had six kills on 30 swings. Hit negative numbers, though. First meeting against the Rainbow Wahine, and quickly she gets a set is blocked back. Good cover there by Hoff. A little push and shove contest above the tape. Once again, Nelson is blocked back, and again at the net, Williams reigning supreme. And a timeout taken by Long Beach State as the Rainbow Wahine have scored five in a row. And they are up 15-8 here in set number two. What happened here over this last burst? Sky Williams just roving at the net, just being so dominant up there, not letting any ball get past her, and does a nice job of tapping the ball down without following through into the cable. I think that's something she's really improved on from the beginning of the year. Let's remember, we've got to remind ourselves that there are nine newbies on this team, and they have really come together to play well. That's right. Well, Ryan Kalei Suji continues to tour this packed arena. Let's send it over to him. He's with the Choi's. What's up, Ryan? That's why we're here with Barney and Terry and uh, uh, Choi. What has this experience been like for you folks, uh, seeing your daughter come home to be able to play here, not for the University of Hawaii? Well, I'll tell you this much. Um, it's been a blessing. Very fortunate to have her home. You know, my mom, Popo, has been here all the way. And I'll just tell you this, that we made one young lady's dream come true. And, and Terry, how about for you? We know that your family is close with Robin. What has this experience been like for uh, Bailey to be able to play for Robin again in this her senior in her last year? Um, you know, for we've known Robin, like you said, forever, since she was like 10 years old, and watched her play at the University of Hawaii. And so it just seems to be a natural progression for my daughter to not only uh, play high school ball with her, but now finish her career off with Robin. It's been absolutely wonderful. Well, thank you for spending time with us. Thank Enjoy you. the rest of the match. Back over to you guys. Thanks a lot, Ryan. One of the best parts of senior night, seeing the smiles on the faces of some of the family members and Barney, who really was Bailey's very first volleyball coach and coached her all the way through basically high school time. Here's Shua from off the net. Oh, that may have been an out ball. Could have been touched at the time, perhaps why Van Sickle laid out in the way that she did. But that ends a 5-0 rainbow run. Even on a poor set, or even on a poor pass there, they're forcing the ball to Shua because she's yet to make an error tonight. She leads. No, she's a second leader in kills. Yep, that's her fifth kill yet to make an error. Yeah, hitting 625. Had to set her all the time, every set. Ross. Oh, my word. That was a monstrous mash by McKenna. That's two big kills she's had tonight. And when we can hear the ball clear over here through our headphones, when you can hear it through the headphones, you know they've hit it hard, right? She is just hanging the ball here as of late. Now behind the service line, 16 serving nine. Bump set. This goes to Nelson, blocked back. Now Shavira takes on the setting responsibility. She was actually recruited as a setter here for the beach. Her swing from the back row bumped over by, you'll see a chase down by Haley Harward. Nelson, roll shot, blocked back by Williams. Now they go slide to Norville, and it's going to be a Hawaii point. It didn't get over the net. And again, Sky Williams just her fingerprints, figuratively and literally, all over this second frame. Yeah. How about you'll see in the middle of that rally trying for another bump kill? How great is it to see the atmosphere here in the Stan Sheriff Center, CMAC? As we have Long Beach State going outside to Nelson, pumped it long. They wanted a touch. They got a touch from the line judge. And so it is a Long Beach State point. There will be no challenge coming from Robin Amon. But, you know, every fan base likes to say that theirs is the most passionate and the most loyal and the most involved. But here in these parts, we like to think, I think, that this fan base, when it comes to volleyball, is about as savvy and passionate and supportive as it gets. And we see it in droves here 
tonight. And Sky Williams once again putting up the wall. She's everywhere. Impenetrable. Yes. You stole the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> what a run she had on the front line. Wow. And right when Long Beach State had closed the gap, right? They were down just two. It was 10-8 in favor of Hawaii, and then Sky Williams went to work. Yeah. And completely changed the complexion of this second frame. Outside is Shavira. And, and a two hot to handle even for Rico Aquino. She's been, Shavira's been so good of late. Last weekend, just an amazing display of attacking against Santa Barbara and Cal Poly. Tonight, struggling a bit. Right now, Shavira, two kills, three errors, hitting negative 059 in 17 swings. That's not a typical Shavira night. Again, was recruited as a setter, and Long Beach State even experimenting with a 6-2 system this year. They said it didn't quite click, and so they moved to a 5-1, and Shavira, who is also obviously pretty talented as an outside hitter, she has given them some great contributions there. You'll see her getting the more traditional kill you saw moments ago. She will serve, but you hear the ovation. That's in large part for Kirsten Sibley, who had a season-high four kills last night against CSUN. You'll see it forces the overpass. IG hammers it down. And once again, IG better thank Noreen Yosea. She's the one who caused that. I mean, when Noreen is wired in from the service line like this, good luck. Yeah. And that's another one. This is straight up crazy. Did she just pass Angelica Uquist in the all-time ace list? Yes, Noreen Yosia now in fourth place on the University of Hawaii's all-time aces list. That is her sixth ace of this match. Tickles the tape there. So again, the beach out of system. It's Williams swiped at that one. And now Hawaii on the attack. It's Ross from the back row. Took a little something off. Dug up there by Igner Swayze. Here's Shavira. Two blockers up. She's stuffed. Amber Igidi saying, oh, no, you don't. You know, during the week off, and Hawaii had the bye, Robin Amo said, you know what, let's work on our blocking. Let's get better at our blocking. I spent a lot of time on blocking. It showed last night, and it's showing again tonight. We're going to have a challenge here from Joy McKenzie Furbringer. Well, they're out of timeouts, but she's got two challenges left, so might as well use this challenge as a timeout, although at 22-11, I'm not sure it's the best time to use the challenge, other than she really wants to get her group settle down. Yeah, you want to perhaps just put a little something together here to feel like there's some momentum that you can take advantage of or be encouraged by going into set number three. And not exactly sure what she is attempting to challenge here. We're awaiting word. It can be regarding any moment in this sequence. And she's looking for a net violation against Hawaii. And I didn't see anything there from our net cam view, which is usually pretty telling in that regard. And so there will be no reversal of any call there. Give another roof to the Rainbow Roofing Company. That is seven on the night. And Hawaii has Long Beach State doubled up. It has been an onslaught since it was 10-8 in favor of Hawaii earlier in this set. Tell you something though, this Long Beach State team is really good, and Hawaii had better not think the match is over just because they win a couple of easy game one and set one and set two. We have seen Hawaii fall victim to that psychology before this Absolutely. year. Absolutely, so they better be careful because this is a very good Long Beach State team who's not putting their best foot forward right now. Here is Harvard. Outside, it is Sibley. Pinballed around, Shavira will slap it over. On one knee, it's dug up by Yosia. Bump set Okino goes to Van Sickle, dug up over the net by Harward. That's her fifth dig of the match. Back row set, it's Ross. Along the sideline, and your Swayze to save, and it's gonna be a miss hit on the set, and so another freebie gifted to the Rainbow Wahine. Why did a smart job by hitting what's called a zero or a neutral ball? You don't get a great set, and it's not what you like it. At least keep the ball in play. Ross has done a great job of doing that her last two swings. 
Pass by Shavira, tight to the net. And Ross made a slight move at it, but didn't actually touch it and kind of let it trickle down to the TerraFlex on Long Beach State's side. And so another point for Hawaii. It is Aloha ball here in a dominant set number two for the Bowl. So tempting to reach over there. The ball is so close to, to the net. But uh, Ross did a nice job of staying disciplined and just going putting her hand straight up and not committing any sort of violation or interfering with the setter. Van Sickle to try to close things out here in set two. Great serve, scramble for the beach, and they will not forge a return. The Rainbow Wahine wins set two, running away. And on senior night, they are one set away from a conference crown all by themselves. Welcome back. Let's take a look at the McDonald's match statistics. How surprising are these very one-sided numbers in many respects, C-Mac? Well, I'm very surprised. Hawaii's hitting over 120 points of their normal average in their kill percentage. Long Beach hitting about 100 below their normal average. Look at the blocking of Hawaii, 7 to 3. That really doesn't even show all the times that Hawaii slowed down the Long Beach blocks. Uh, digs about even there, see the ace there. Those nine service aces, in case you missed them, Noreen Yosia put on a show with six of those nine aces. Now fourth place all time on the UH career aces list. I mean, that second set, it was a tsunami of Rainbow Wahine playmaking and just dominance since it was 10-8 at one point in that second frame. And again, Hawaii reigning supreme atop the tape. The block has once again fashioned itself very nicely for the Rainbow Wahine. Everybody getting in on actually Noreen Yosia had a block solo and she had four block assists. And uh, everybody getting in on the action. Sky Williams, or you see Brooke Ben Sickle got in on it. She's in on another one there with IG. They're just putting on a roofing clinic. The Akamai Roofing Report, we're up to seven total team blocks for Hawaii, and this crowd was revved up during the intermission by the Rainbow Warrior volleyball team. How jacked are they right now to get to their season? They still got to wait a little bit, but not too far away. And this is just incredible. Noreen Yosia with her seventh ace of the match. She is just torching this thing right now. The beach, like I said before, has not put their best foot forward. And Hawaii had better be careful to not awaken the sleeping giant that is Long Beach State. And it's going to be a miss hit on that second touch by Long Beach State. So Noreen Yosia with that ace, her seventh of the match, has now established a new career high. She also now has 44 aces on the season as Amber Igedi was able to levitate just long enough to turn that one back. First mistake by Shua tonight. She's been their go-to player. High percentage, no mistakes at all. Finally, Amber Igedi makes her pair. Three serving love here in the third. High and away, it goes to Williams. And she was able to find that area of the court where no rainbow light hit anywhere. Smart shot by Kashana that time. Wide open spaces there in area one. And then you'll see it snuck up as if Kashana might tip one. One serving three. First touch there by Ross. Backside set goes to Van Sickle. It was a little low, so she sends it to the deep corner. And then Williams, another one of those sort of punching put downs. You call it a push dink. Goes up and, instead of tipping it so it goes up and then down, it just goes straight down. Oh, and there's an ace by Shavira. And Long Beach State, just when it looked like they were being pressured to possibly buckle here after getting run off. In set number two, down three nothing. They're able to bounce right back, and we may have ourselves a third set after all. A lot of pride in this Long Beach State program. Long Beach State volleyball, men and women, they're not going to go meekly into the night. You'll see it. 
goes straight up on the bump set to Brooke Van Sickle. That was nice. Net violation called against the beach. But you'll see, how about the confidence? She was cornering Brooke Van Sickle, popped it up the chimney, and then Brooke vaulting off of the trampoline. Very difficult set to hit, but it's coming over your head like that. That is a team best eighth kill for Van Sickle. She's hitting 438. And Hawaii will get a free chance here. IGD the pass. High ball outside goes to Ross. Down the line and in. McKenna Ross, six kills, still without an error here this evening. Well, McKenna, after last night and tonight, she's just again, putting on a show. How much of it is because her family's in town? Who knows? Certainly a little pumped up, I would say, with the Ohana here in the stands. We heard from them early. And as mentioned, McKenna Ross, who has now, coming into tonight, gone do double figures in kills for the last five matches. Finds herself with six put downs here so far this evening. The service error gives it right back to the Rainbow Wahine. I mean, we thought that Hawaii played an extremely efficient match last night, but the expectation, even for them to be in this position, and there's still a lot of volleyball obviously left to be played tonight, but just to put themselves in this position with the kind of ease it appears as though they've done it with, how surprising is that? Yeah, very surprising. I really thought that Long Beach State would uh, put up a better battle in those first two sets, but you know, a lot of it had to do with how well Hawaii was playing. Hawaii was playing uh, some amazing volleyball, especially the transition game. Hawaii hit like 500 in the first set. And, uh, and 400. And Long Beach State wasn't hitting for a bad number either, but and then Marina Yosia came in and started serving. And then Sky Williams started blocking him one thing after another. It was like a tsunami, as you said earlier. Great way to describe it. If Hawaii, if Hawaii doesn't keep the foot on the pedal, though, this Long Beach State team can come right back and get in this match. And McKenna Ross keeps riding that tsunami. She has seven kills and just in the groove. And Hawaii up 7-5, and Bailey Choi getting ready to serve. 2016 Iolani grad, three-year starter at Utah before matriculating back home to the 50th state. Here she is setting up Ross on the outside. Harward with the dig along the back line. It goes to Kennedy, she's blocked. Kennedy a second crack at it by the block, dug up by Okino right on the money. Here's Yosia against the double block, and it's covered by Choi. Back bump set Williams to Ross. Are you kidding me? You know what? I think in the off week, that Robin Omo and Angelica Inquist and Khalil Baxter had the middles do back bump sets like that and practice that as well as their blocking and to play some back row defense. That was a perfect blind back bump set by Sky Williams. Go figure. What a time to pull that one off. Eight serving five. Outside it goes to Kennedy, pushes it deep. And Sickle with the up. How about that pass and set by Okino, but that one did not get above the tape. And McKenna Ross commits her first hitting error of the match. That was a tough swing. Ball coming from 30 feet away. It was high. Tough ball to swing. So six serving eight, and here it comes from the setter, Carly Egner Swayze. Pass tight to the net. It's a one-hand set to Williams, and she's turned back by Norville. Norville with her fourth block here this evening. She's a force at the net. Is every night. And has some international experience with the Norwegian national team. Here's Yosia. And that's going to be an out call. Line judge on one side had it in. Line judge on the other had it out. And the top official, Patsy Malta, decided to go with the out call. It will be challenged by Robin Amo, though. She will say that uh, she wants Dixon Chun to see if that one was actually in. So now we go into filibuster mode here as we await Dixon Chun's ruling. See if we have a good angle here from up top. It was clearly within the sideline. The only question is, did it go it's long or did it catch end that end line? 
I don't know. It looks to me like it was out. I agree with you. Doesn't certainly seem like there's enough there to reverse what was the out call. Yeah, definitely out. And we'll over, overturn the reverse of that one. So if this one is upheld as we would anticipate, it would mean a 3-0 run here for Long Beach State, and we're even Steven at eight apiece. But Dixon Chung taking a gander at this thing. Now he's off with the headset. And the verdict. He calls it in. And that's a point for the Rainbow Wahine. And I think Robin Amo as surprised, albeit enthusiastic, as anybody. To be honest with you, I thought that she was, I think that she was uh, using a challenge card to slow things down and not have to use a timeout. Enjoy Mackenzie Furbringer a little bit in shock, as is her husband, Matt Furbringer, and Robin Amo Santos. Oh, Robin Amo is uh, shocked herself. So that's a bit of a tone changer there. Instead of 8-8, eight, eight, it's 9 serving 7. They go slide to Norville, and she didn't get it past the top of the table. Or will they give Williams the block? Either way, it's a Hawaii point. Here it comes from McKenna Ross. Again, sends it deep, attacking the Frosh, Shavira, who gets the set on the outside. She goes cross court. And that caught a piece of somebody on the Hawaii side of the net. So a point for Long Beach State. And Shavira, such a talented athlete. Got off to a slow start tonight. But if she comes alive and gets hot, watch out, Hawaii. You better start placing better defense and better blocking than you are right now because she is a good one. There's Van Sickle backstepping with the pass. Winds up, climbs the ladder, but she didn't get it flush. In fact, caught a piece of it and sent it wide. So point here for Long Beach State, nine serving 10. A little sputtering on both sides here at this juncture of set number three. Well, we have two sets to noon. 25-18 in the first, 25-12 in the second, and Sky Williams puts it down to put Hawaii back up a deuce. Now Brick and six adjusted to that serve, but she thought she was going to pass it with her forearms. Last second, she pulled her hands up and uh, hand passed it to the net. And here is Rico Okino. She is, by athletic standing, still a junior, but she is set to graduate. And so she will be joining in the senior festivities at the conclusion tonight as the connection between Choi and Aijidi here once more. I like the way that Bailey is starting to take a few more chances, but she's off the net, not actually on the net, but she goes off the net toward the three meter line and still goes for Amber, showing a lot of confidence in their connection. Four kills for Amber, hitting 375. Hawaii up three. Outside, it's Williams. Oh, my word. Just bounces it off of the Terraflex. That was a heater. Yeah, she can unload. I felt that one under the seat here. That's right. That was, that was a rocket. That was like a California earthquake. What a swing. Deep kill for her. She's the first attacker in the double figures here this evening. Choi goes right side, it's Yosia through the double block and down. Noreen Yosia continues to put in work. That's her fifth kill. She's without an error to go along with her 16 assists, her five blocks, her three digs, and oh, her seven aces. Just filling up the stat sheet here on senior night. Unbelievable. Tried to get cute with it. A little too cute that time. Really interesting to see during the introductions tonight. Noreen getting a little bit emotional. Yeah. I think these players know, right? I mean, 
especially someone like Noreen, who has played through now the transition from Dave Shoji to Robin Amo as she gets the assist there to Brooke Van Sickle. And she is sort of the representation, the face, if you will, of this senior class uh, that for the most part really represents the changing of the guard, right? From the legendary head coach Dave Shoji to Robin Amo, and once again emerging this year after giving way to Cal Poly each of the last two seasons in the Big West Conference Championship race. Once again emerging as a championship team within the league. And Noreen, you'll see her, represents all of them. Yeah, oh, by the way, she can call a huddle anytime she wants and just coach the team. Time out on the floor, Hawaii. Up for Welcome back. Visit the new Spectrum store at Pearl Highland Center above Sam's Club. Learn about Spectrum Mobile and get the best devices, latest technology, and coolest accessories. The store is open Monday through Saturday, 9 to 8, and Sundays, 10 to 6. A whiteout here at the Stan Sheriff Center. And just about everybody got the memo. That one put down there by Shua. Long Beach State trailing by three here in the third. Hawaii up two sets to none. They have the opportunity to at least crack open the broom closet. They would love to finish it out here in three on senior night. You know, they're trying to get the ball to show when she's in the front row as much as they can, but their passing hasn't been accurate enough to really feed her as much as they'd like. You know, for the night, she's only had nine sets altogether. That was the tenth set right there. And Sickle. Trying to adjust to that pass. Bump set goes to Helvig. Diving save in the back row there by Dela Cruz. The tip shot by Kennedy is blocked back. Quick reset for her. A little bit more authority there. She's blocked back anyway. A third time Kennedy threw the block dug up by Okino. You'll see a middle to Igidi. The tip saved by Dela Cruz. Here's Kennedy yet again. Easy pickings there. You'll see her. Okino. Back row set goes to Van Sickle. Dug up by Harward. Shul will get a crack at it. Through the block, rattled around, and finally triples to the Terraflex, resulting in a point for Long Beach State. So he gives Shua kill number seven. And the serve by Hoff goes long. Point for the Rainbow Wahina. So what is on the line here for Hawaii, we already know they're going to the NCAA tournament. We already know they have at least a share of the conference crown. What they can do is they can own the crown by themselves, and boy, wouldn't that be nice. The other thing is, with certainly a strong performance this evening, they can help themselves in regard to the RPI as Helvey goes through the block, punched up there by Kennedy, she'll get a swing at it. Diving save there, Van Sickle. Here's Helvig against the double block. And she annihilates it. You know what's interesting, Kanoa? Hawaii has not relied on Helvig as usual tonight. It's been McKenna Ross, it's been Brooke Van Sickle, it's been the middles, and all of a sudden now we're calling Helvig's name. And oh, by the way, her arm and leg, legs look pretty fresh, don't they? Yeah, far cry from what we saw at sort of the mid-section of the season. Speaking of mid-section, the mid-section of the offense getting some work tonight for Hawaii. Sky Williams, kill number seven. She's hitting up near 500. Timeout, Long Beach State. Hawaii closing in on the chip. Welcome back. We take a look at Hana Helvig's put down just moments ago. HMSA's dental plan is all about winning smiles. And a lot of smiles as Hawaii is winning right now. And Kyra Hanawahine adding to it with the ace out of the timeout. We talked about Long Beach State playing their best volleyball of the season here in the last several weeks. When they lost to Hawaii back in September, they were 3-11 at the time, 0-2 to start Big West Conference play. They've gone 9-4 since. But it is clear that right now, the Rainbow Wahine are playing perhaps their best volleyball of the season. The roof there by Shula. But, I mean, this has been, now for the second straight night, just an incredibly efficient all-around performance by the home team. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. And, and you know, we just saw Kyra Wahine uh, Hana Wahine put up an ace there. I watched practice yesterday. She was the best defender on the court and 
pretty darn good server as well. Another good block by Ross. Everybody's getting in on the block party. Everyone doing their part here for the Rainbow Wahine. And when you talked with Robin Amo after the match last night, she clearly recognized that that was one of the better matches that her team has played all around all season. But she didn't seem all that surprised. I think she felt like coming off of the bye week, they were rested. They had a really strong week of practice. And I think she, in a way, expected this level of at least enthusiasm and energy. And certainly is pleased with how it has transpired here so far this weekend as Hawaii up 21-14 in the third. We will keep it here. And while we close in perhaps on the conclusion of this match, I want to ask you your thoughts on this senior class. We talked about they were the crossover from Choji to Amo. Uh, but players like Noreen Yosia, who will be forever remembered because of uh, how she is locked in on so many of the record book lists and continues to climb here uh, in the latter stages of her career. Uh, your thoughts overall on just what this class represents? Well, I think it's really symbolized by Noreen Yosia and and the fact that not only her serving and all that, but you know, when, when Joey Rasmussen went down, Marine you'll see was also called in to be a hitter again. And she had not practiced hitting at all. All of a sudden, she took on that hitting role for the rest of the season up until now. And, the, and when the team was, was having trouble, she would call them together. She would make them huddle up, and she would, would be the Robin Amo on the court. She really took charge, took, had very strong leadership, and basically refused to lose. I thought that was what symbolized the senior class, and they all followed her, went right along with yeah. the Pied Piper. She had to redefine herself as a player, as a member of this team, several times over throughout her career. A reminder, tomorrow it's the HHSAA football D1 semifinal. Iolani meets Moanalua for a shot to move on to the championship game. Tune into Spectrum OC16 live at 6.45 p.m. That has the makings of being a really good prep football postseason matchup. Hawaii has been really good, to say the least, here tonight against longtime rival Long Beach State. And it is Bailey Choi serving out of the timeout. 21 serving 14. Set goes left side, it's Kennedy. Dug up back over the net by Choi. That was almost a defensive move there. Kennedy blocked back. She'll get a third try at it. The tip shot sniffed out by Choi. You'll see a sets up Ross. She's able to save it herself, but only momentarily. As she got blocked back, Okino couldn't prevent it from touching the referee ladder over there across the way. Katie Kennedy from Long Beach took a couple really good swings. Choi just had a better block. Yeah, Kennedy now 21 attempts, just two kills to go along with two errors. Here's Ross from the other side, and she gets another kill. McKenna Ross with her ninth put down. See, Robin Amo and Joe Yukos had, had a kind of a side conversation during that last time out. The conversation was about do we return Sibley if we have this game in hand? And I guess that was the decision that was made. Sibley's in the lineup. Outside, Shavira. Well, that was heavy-handed. Put a little extra sauce on that one. Shavira picks up her fourth kill. Finally hitting zero. She was hitting negative all night long. Now she's four kills, four errors. And boy, she has got it on. You saw her athleticism just then. She is a player and a half. Long Beach hitting 126 for the match compared to 345 on the Hawaii side of the net. And Carly Hill will serve. Down the line it goes Sibley with the pass. Here's you'll see a little bit off the net. Dug up by Harward in the back row. They go right side. Shavira down the line and another laser shot there off the palm of Tia Shavira. So we got the attendance numbers, tickets issued 10,300. That is max here at the San Sheriff Center. Through the turnstile, officially 9,067. But a sellout officially in the books, first since 2013 for Hawaii. But a little bumpy ride here over the last couple of sequences as Hawaii gets whistled for being out of rotation, C-Mac. And so a point for Long Beach State. They are within four. And so 
as the crowd gets ready to explode. Hawaii closing in on possibly finishing this thing. Long Beach State, they still have a little something to say about it before this thing is piled. The Rainbow Warrior football team returning to action tomorrow night. High stakes late November affair with San Diego State, the West Division title on the line. You can catch that one live at 5.15 p.m. on Spectrum Sports Pay-Per-View. Tune in to channel 255 or 1255 to order now. But I think it behooves you like it certainly motivated all of the fans to come down to the Stan Sheriff Center tonight. It behooves you to get down to Aloha Stadium to support the football program's effort tomorrow night in Halava. UH fans, select your exact seat locations when purchasing individual game tickets at hawaiiathletics.com. Click on the tickets button to print your tickets. Avoid the lines by going online. You have been saying all night, C-Mac, look out for Long Beach State. They die hard, even though it was a dominant performance in the first two sets for Hawaii. It is tough to shake this Long Beach State team. Uh, they are better than what the scoreboard has shown tonight. What are we seeing from them here in the last few moments? Well, they're certainly not wanting to get routed in three. They want to win this third set. They've been playing very strong here. they got a good lineup right now. They've got in the front row, they've got Cristiano Williams, and they've got Tia Chavira, two of their, their best hitters in the front row right now. So Hawaii had better get a rotation on her, get a side out, or they're going to be in trouble. 18 serving 22. Okino with the pass. Troy goes right side. It's Yosia against a double block. That one sniffed out by Eigner Wait, uh, Swayze. Here is Williams. Hits it into the net. And so a point for Hawaii. And a missed opportunity there for the heavy swinger, Kashana Williams. And it is Rika Okino. Awaiting the signal from the bench. And what area of the floor to try to serve it to? She sends it deep. It goes middle. Norville gets it down. Norville picks up kill number three. She again has been getting negative all night. That gets her back to 0 0 0. Three kills, three air. These last two points for Hawaii are going to be very difficult to get. Haley Harward with the serve. Choi goes outside, it's Sibley over the block, dug up there by Hill. They go right side, it's Shavira, cross court and wide. Was there a touch? No touch. Point for the Rainbow Wahine. And they rise over 9,000 strong, most wearing white to celebrate senior night as the Rainbow Wahine are one point away from a sole Big West championship. And guess who behind the service line? Right side, Shavira. She will postpone the celebration for at least another moment. What a swing. What an athlete she is. I tell you, Long Beach State only graduates three people. Most of the rest of their lineup are freshmen and sophomores. We've got some good recruits coming in. They're going to be really good next year, contending for the Big West title, I'm sure. It's still Aloha Ball. You'll see us. Sets up Sibley. Blocked back, diving save, Helvig collides with Okino. Sibley again, blocked back, Okino the cover. You'll see a middle to Igidi. And it is over. A kahi, a lua, aloha. The Rainbow Wahine once again sit atop the Big West Conference throne. What a performance. Magical. Dominating, surprising. You know what? They did it last night too. So maybe it's not so. so maybe we shouldn't be so surprised. Nine newcomers losing their best player, the best attacker in the, in the beginning part of the season, and having to do it all with smoke and mirrors the rest of the year. A lot of credit's got to go to that uh, Hawaii coaching staff. Oh, right, there's a nice sign. Champions, they are. As we take a look at the Bank of Hawaii players of the match, as the celebration ensues, a sweet, sweep of a send-off for the Rainbow Wahine seniors. Kashana Williams had a match-high 10 kills at 263, and we're going to give the nod to all of the seniors 
Bailey Choi, Rico Okino, Noreen Yosia, McKenna Ross, and Kirsten Sibley as they succeed in creating a splendid senior night celebration here at the Stan Sheriff Center in front of a sellout crowd. And there's the hardware. Big West champions again for the first time since 2016. And for the first time in this Robin Amo head coaching era. We'll give way to the PA. Stay with us. We would like to bring your attention to the court, and I'd like to pass things to Ben Kiaina, who is the voice of the University of Hawaii Rainbow Wahine Volleyball Team here in the Stan Sheriff Center. Sir. Ladies and gentlemen, with tonight's victory, the Hawaii Rainbow Wahine Volleyball Team has claimed sole possession of first place in the Big West Conference with a final record of 14 and two. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome University of Hawaii Athletics Director, Mr. David Matlin. Along with the University of Hawaii President, David Lassner. And now, presenting the Big West Conference Championship Trophy to the 2019 Big West Conference Women's Volleyball Champions, your Hawaii Rainbow Wahine. So a championship celebration. And that's just part of the party. They still got to do a whole senior night. As this sellout crowd gives a much deserved standing ovation, the Rainbow Wahine saved their best for the last weekend of the regular season. The only question that remains now is will we see this atmosphere again this season? if Hawaii is granted an opportunity to host in the NCAA tournament. Oh, we got so much to discuss and so much to take in from the senior night festivities. We will take a break first, and we will be back here at the Stan Sheriff Center. Get in the game with on-demand highlights of University of Hawaii sporting events. Spectrum subscribers have exclusive access to Spectrum Sports Enhanced Channels 13 and 10-13. Well, CMAC Hawaii, 24 and three. They finished Big West Conference play 14 and two. They hoist the hardware, and now they wait for Selection Sunday, two Sundays from now, to find out where they go, if anywhere, for the first rounds of the NCAA tournament. I just want to give you the final thought here before we send it over for the senior night festivities. Well, I've been so impressed with the way they played in the last two nights, playing their best volleyball of the season. Robin Armour has got to be proud of them peaking at the right time. I think she used her bye week correctly. You know what? They got another bye week coming up. I think they'll use that correctly as well and be ready to rock and roll come uh, NCAA time. And I hope it's here in the Stan Sheriff Center. They well, deserve it. To the best fan base in all of collegiate volleyball, a wonderful night to celebrate the success of this Rainbow Wahine volleyball season and to celebrate this very special senior class. The Corner Crew will have the senior festivities for you for Chris McLaughlin. I'm Kanoa Lehi. Till next time, everybody, aloha from the Stan Sheriff Center. From Spectrum Sports, it's the Heineken Post Game Show. And back inside the Stan Sheriff Center where the match has been won, a championship has been claimed, but now it's time to party. Let's throw it over to the public address announcer, Ben Kia Aina, for the senior celebration. Go. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the court for our senior night festivities. Here representing the University of Hawaii Federal Credit Union, please welcome President and CEO, Travis Bow. Vice President of Lending, Brian Anderson. And Credit Manager, May Garcia-Stevens. 
representing the University of Hawaii. Please welcome Athletics Director David Matlin and Associate Athletics Director for Student Services and Senior Women's Administrator Lois Mannon. After graduating as valedictorian at Kalani High School in 2016, our first senior made the decision to stay and play at UH. After redshirting as a true freshman, she has appeared in 57 career matches. This year as a team's libero, she has recorded career highs with 212 digs, 68 assists, and 12 service aces. She will miss working hard and giving 100% with her teammates feeling the support from the entire state of Hawaii and our caring and loving coaching staff. She'll be graduating this spring with a degree in civil engineering and she plans on working as a civil engineer locally with the goal of making our community a better place to live for future generations. Fans, one last time, let's hear it for number 16 from Honolulu, Rico Okino. Enrico Aquino, another example of just that hardworking local girl who had a dream of playing at the University of Hawaii, continuing that long tradition of great local liberos. You can see her being greeted. And again, these seniors will be passing out a commemorative ball that they get to decorate. Rika really taking it at the stylish level there. A black ball looks like a purse almost, uh, but really a hard worker, a local girl from Kalani High School and a great role model for future Wahine. I think definitely a great role model. She came on basically as a walk-on red shirt freshman graduating in civil engineering, but one of the most improved liberos I've ever seen come into this program. Fans, Junko and Landon of Honolulu joining with a number of family members that are also here in the Stan Sheriff Center. After a standout career at Iolani School, our second senior played her first three collegiate seasons at Utah, where she graduated in three years with a degree in finance. After transferring home for her final season at Hawaii, she is one of three Rainbow Wahine to play every set this season. She has recorded 524 assists and 197 digs with six double-doubles this season. Her favorite part of being a Rainbow Wahine has been being surrounded by all the coaches, players, tutors, trainers, and staff here at UH. It is truly one big ohana. She will earn her master's degree in accounting in the spring of 2021 and wants to go into real estate development. Fans, please put your hands together for number seven from Honolulu, Billy Joy. And we heard from her father during the broadcast, Barney saying, that Robin helped make her dream come true. She always wanted to be a Rainbow Wahine, had the opportunity to come back home after spending that time in Utah. The Iolani standout really doing a nice job of coming in and fitting into this program right away and helping to share that setting duty with Noreen Yosio. And talk about it, another great role model. She got the opportunity to go away, play in the Pac-12 at Utah, graduate early, come home and play in front of all family, friends, and her younger brother is gonna be playing for the University of Men's Volleyball here too. And her family who has been at every match, you can see her grandmother there, and her family, and, and the former Rainbow Wahine, Mahina Elneki, right there as well. Uh, but, you know, we heard from their parents saying that they have a great relationship with Robin Amo, and one of the things was she wanted to play for Robin one last time, fitting that she gets to end her career here in Hawaii playing for Robin. You know, Ryan, I love the way that uh, Bailey Choi was like rock steady all year long. Didn't make many mistakes, always made the right set, was just so steady. She'd always be counted on to be a an error-free kind of a player. Our third senior came to Hawaii after a four-year career at Campo Lindo High School in Moraga, California. During her four-year career, she has appeared in 55 career matches and has recorded 138 kills, 28 blocks, and 52 digs. Her favorite part of being in a Rainbow Wahine has been playing with her best friends and playing for the state of Hawaii. 
She will miss being with your team every day, learning from the best coaching staff, and playing in the stand in front of amazing fans. She will graduate this spring with a double major in journalism and communications, and wants to become a sports reporter. Fans, please put your hands together for number nine from Lafayette, California, Kirsten Sibley. And Kirsten Sibley, one of the hardest working members of this team, going hard every single day in the practice gym, helping to make her teammates better. Uh, she is an example of a true team player. Talk about showing your personality. Her volleyball is decorated with, you are my sunshine. And you know, she's the ultimate in team player, didn't get a ton of time, worked hard, and every one of everybody's favorites. And did you notice how hard they tried to get the final set to her? They gave her two chances to put the match away. Couldn't quite do it, but definitely one of the most popular players in the team. I know she's looking forward to in the off season, doing a lot of surfing. She loves the ocean. And here to greet her, her family all the way from the mainland. Our fourth senior came to Hawaii originally as a defensive specialist out of Aliso Niguel High School. But from the get-go, she has proved herself to be an outside hitter for the past four seasons. She has appeared in 80 career matches and has notched 313 kills, 316 digs, and 39 blocks. Her most memorable moment was playing in her first match in the Stan Sheriff Center as a Rainbow Wahine. The best part of playing at UH has been being a part of the Rainbow Wahine legacy and continuing this tradition of excellence and hard work that all the past Wahine have built. She will graduate next month with a degree in public health and plans to attend nursing school here with the goal of becoming a labor and delivery nurse. Fans, let's show our aloha for number 20 from Aliso Viejo, California, McKenna! And hard to believe McKenna Ross came on as a walk-on defensive specialist to this program and ending her career as a six-rotation outside hitter. I remember her very first match against Arizona. Hawaii was down 0-2. She comes off the bench, helps lead Hawaii to victory. And from that moment on, she was an outside hitter and has really just been such a great team player a real leader of this in this her senior season and carrying on in her family legacy, of course, her dad Jason, her auntie Nohia Tano. Uh, you see her joined by her family here, but she is very happy to be able to play and represent her family here. You know, pretty much fearless. She comes on and just goes for everything, all out, all the way, but then she learns and grows and becomes just a huge contributing factor to this team. I think she's been in the weight room lately because she was hitting the ball harder than I've seen her in four years, just pounding the last two nights. Our final senior came to Hawaii after a standout career at Redondo Union High School. This double-double machine has recorded 61 career double-doubles and five career triple-doubles. Currently, she is ranked number nine with 3,080 assists number 10 with 1,137 digs, and number four with 134 career service aces. This year she has led UH with 577 assists, 293 digs, and 44 service aces. Her most memorable moment was playing at the Stan Sheriff Center for the very first time. It was against Wisconsin. She's at the net, and Emily Maglio jump serves the ball straight to her head. <laughs> She'll miss her teammates, the coaching staff, Coach Tommy, Renee, Jimbo, Steve-O, and the whole indoor staff who have been her family away from home. She will graduate this spring with a degree in sociology and hopes to play professionally overseas. Fans, please show your aloha one last time for number 10 from Torrance, California, the And she has really become sort of the face of this program. Starting in her freshman season, taking over the reins midway through the season as a starting setter and has been in that position ever since. Noreen Yosia, a three-time Big West first team selection and really making a case for Big West player of the year, I believe, 
a player that can play it all, do it all, and just to see her growth over these past four years as a player and a person has just been tremendous. And I think she ampl amplifies the Ho'omau, really, truly. She has persevered through so much, and she's grown. And, you, and Coach Robin really has helped her with all of this as well. What a show she put on tonight with seven aces to, to end her career here at the Stan Sheriff Center. Oh, no, it might not be the end of her career at the Stan Sheriff Center. Hopefully she'll be back in two weeks for the NC2A championships. She's one of the most touted players coming out of high school, a big recruit, a big get for the University of Hawaii. When she decided to commit here, she said she wanted to come here because she wanted the opportunity to experience this fan base and really get in touch with her culture. We're going to see some of that coming up. And Chris, you were alluding to this. She actually has two of her coaches here, Joy McKenzie, who is still here. She hasn't left the court. The Long Beach head coach sitting in the ch uh, chair watching all of this happening, no doubt proud of the player Marino Sia has become as well. And a lot of fans here at the Stan Sheriff Center are still here, maybe because they don't want to deal with the parking and <laughs> getting out of the traffic. But of course, this has been an incredible experience. Always uh, a lot of people looking forward to senior nights. We have a few recruits in town. Hawaii uses this as a recruiting tool to really showcase this strong fan base. One of the things you're going to notice is this is the now you see them, and pretty soon it's going to be now you don't. And here we go, they're gonna be throwing their senior balls out into the crowd. A tradition that started during the Wahine volleyball season of 2003, during Lily Kahomoku, Kim Willoughby, their senior year. And it's a tradition that has continued ever since then. Ladies and gentlemen, why don't you take a seat right now because we'd like to bring your attention to the video board. And for those of you at home, enjoy this video of your University of Hawaii Rainbow Wahine volleyball team. First and foremost, it's been such an honor to be part of this program and this legacy that they've had. Um, I think that my time here um, has been very special and really shaped who I am today. The life lesson that I would take away would be um, determination and hard work and just never giving up because I was an undersized hitter coming out of high school, came here as a DS libero, and then now I'm an outside hitter, so I didn't really let all the stereotypes of um, being too short or whatever kind of stop me. I kind of just kept working and was determined to what I wanted, the type of player I wanted to be. I'll definitely miss my teammates a lot and just playing for a team and having one common goal and kind of sharing it with a group of girls. Um, I will definitely also miss um, playing for the stand and just all the fans and the state just having your back. The fans here are incredible. Um, every player that goes through why talks about it, but it's just something that when you experience firsthand, there's like nothing in this world that compares to it. And um, not a lot of volleyball programs out there are fortunate enough to have fans like we do. And it's just something that's so unique, so special to this program. It's been a legacy that's been part of this program for such a long time. And just to be part of that and like part of, it feels like you're almost part of history because of it. That is, it's meant the world to me. Being a student athlete is not easy, that's for sure. Uh, I feel like there's been many lessons learned and I feel like who I was when I was a freshman compared to now is totally different and I feel like I've grown so much and I have my coaches and my parents and my family to thank for that. Players that have come through this program as well as the coaches, um, they have taught me 
so many different things that I don't think I could have got anywhere else. Just seeing the way I've grown into the woman I am today. Just being a senior now and just looking back at all the years that I've been here has been very like emotional for me. So um, I don't know, my time as a Rainbow Wahine has been like amazing, all the hard times. I've definitely been more fun times than hard times, but um, I would just say the end result is just a great. I am going to miss like seeing Coach Tommy in the morning at 6 o'clock, even though he's always telling us to go run. Like, I'm going to miss that. I'm going to miss getting yelled at by Coach Rob and giving her a hard time. You know, just being around the girls and just being in the type of environment here. Um, it's very different from the mainland. and. Um, I don't know, I'm just gonna miss it. The Stan Sheriff. I've loved being home and playing in the Stan Sheriff and playing for Coach Robin and Coach Ange and Coach Kalea. And yeah, I mean, I would say like fate brought me here and I truly do believe in that. And so I'm just, I'm just happy that I've got to experience this whole thing. In Hawaii, it's like volleyball is a main source of where everyone just comes together and like can cheer for the rainbow wahines and in a way it's it's a place of gathering and like to feel all that love and support in the stand sheriff is it's truly amazing and it's kind of like it's like a miracle you know like where one thing on this island can bring all these people together whether they know each other or not they all love the game of volleyball and like to be able to be part of that and be part of the source of that, it's something amazing to think about, you know, if you put it into perspective. You know, four years being home and playing for this amazing program, it's just hard to imagine it any other way. And I'm just really happy with my decision to stay home. I feel like I would have or I wouldn't have been able to you know, like develop and grow into this person that I've become today. It's taught me a lot about being patient and, you know, continuing to keep your mindset on the goal. And even though it might take longer than you had um, imagined to begin with, uh, you know, you just, you, you set that goal for a reason. And you know, it's far more rewarding when you work for something that you've been working for a long time. I feel like I've grown into like a like a woman. As ca when I came in, I felt like a was a girl. <laughs> I feel like I've made a lot of um, meaningful relationships and connections with people who will probably be in my life for forever. <laughs>
Ladies State, we start off with Brooke Van Sickle. She was climbing the ladder tonight. Nine kills for Brooke. One of them right there from the back row. She hit 350 on the night. It was terrific all around for the Rainbow Wahine. Talking about terrific, McKenna Ross continues her hot streak. Nine kills on the night, hit 261. She also had six digs, including a uh, block as well. And how about the blocking? Last night, 10, tonight, nine for the University of Hawaii. Leading the way with six, or make that five of those blocks, is Noreen Yosia. As you see the double block put up right there by the Rainbow Wahine. And Yosia, once again, gotta be the player of the year in the Big West Conference. She lights up the stat sheet, five kills, hit 417. She had 20 assists. She had seven service aces five digs and five blocks but how about that seven service aces as away wins it in three and they win the big west conference championship outright for the first time since 2016. welcome back to the heineken post game show all right let's continue the senior celebration with noreen yosia Fun, fun, fun here at the stand, Sheriff. Center Hawaii beats Long Beach State. Let's take a look now at the final numbers from the victory for the University of Hawaii. Of course, the final stats brought to you by Levitt, Yamani, and Solner. And guys, once again, like last night, Hawaii pretty dominant. Well, their kill percentage was pretty spectacular at 333. I mean, point. They just were bombing balls away, and the set distribution was excellent again. Yeah, I mean, the hitting percentage high, but how about the service aces? Of course, a lot of credit to Noreen Yosia. 12 service aces, and Long Beach State, a team that's traditionally really good defensively, very good passing, to get 12 service aces against a team like that says a lot about the pressure that Hawaii was putting on them from behind the service line. Hi, everybody. I'm Scott. She's Lisa. He's Ryan. And... The coach, Chris, joining us here in the corner. And guys, what an epic night. Some senior nights have a little bit more meaning than others. For Hawaii tonight on the line was a chance to win the outright championship for the first time in a couple of years and, and really build that resume. And they played well last night and tonight. It seems like they've got all, all gears clicking. You know, I, I think I'm, I'm really most impressed with the fact that this team started out with nine newcomers. And it's really hard to have nine newcomers you know, sort of fit into the system and have any kind of team chemistry. It's really hard to do. And uh, hey, nice picture of Robin Amo there read in the, the title, paper. Read the title. Talent on the way. There was talent on the way, just what you're <laughs> alluding to. So I, I you know, I, I really think that uh, that that 
incorporating those nine was really important. But how about the way the, the journey has gone? Their best player gets them through the first couple of tournaments, Jolie Rasmussen, and all of a sudden she goes down, and now what? They've got to totally revamp their offense. Noreen Yosia's got to start hitting again. She didn't practice hitting at all in August and most of September. And all of a sudden she's in a new role, and then all of a sudden Noreen decides that, oh, she's going to take over as the coach on the floor as well, and the coach in the tunnel. All sorts of roles changed, and I'm just amazed at the way the journey has gone. Coaching staff has just done an amazing job. Give some credit to Angelica Yukas, what job she's done with her middles. Uh, so it's just been really fun to watch, and tonight was really special. I agree with you, Ryan. That Long Beach team is always a good passing team. They always play great defense, and tonight, Hawaii was just too much from behind the service line. Let's talk about tonight's match, because Hawaii came away with nine total team blocks. But it felt like every attack was challenged by Long Beach State. Oh, definitely every attack. But again, back to the coaching staff, Chris, like you said, they have done some magic with this team. If you ask me where they were and where they are now, they have done breakdown after breakdown. And I'd have to say that Coach Robin Amo and her staff tonight feel like all their players did their job. All your interviews and post-game interviews should say all they have to do is their job. But I think tonight and last night, she could honestly walk away and say they did their job. Yeah, and I think it's a good illustration of where this team is going. I think that the fact that they were able to actually sweep two nights in a row, when's the last time they did that? I mean, they were efficient. The players uh, that needed to show up did. And I think one of the great things is Hawaii has become diversified. It's not just a one-dimensional player where they're setting the same player every single ball. We saw uh, these setters get multiple players involved, and I think Hawaii's going to need that distribution going into the tournament. You know, can I get a quick vote in? Sure. I, I vote for Robin Amo for Coach of the Year. I vote for Noreen Yosia, Player of the Year. And oh, how about Hannah Helvig for Freshman of the Year? For sure. I, I, I would agree. be surprised if all three don't win those awards. I mean, there may be uh, competition, obviously, for Player of the Year, but I don't think there's a single player that means as much to her team as Noreen Yosia does to Hawaii. Yeah, and I agree. I mean, they are, of course, some wonderful players. I mean, you look down the list. I mean, they're, they're, you know, uh, Ruddins for Santa Barbara has been putting up some stellar numbers as well. But I think if you take a player like Noreen Yosia off the scene, this is a much different team. And she has done it in so many different ways from not only the offense that she runs, uh, but also from the offense that she provides as a hitter and her serving and her defense. There is very few things that this young lady can do. Well, to think that she was only playing three rotations the first the most part of this season until the injuries kind of turned things around and she was put into that situation where she was last year. It's not even put into the situation. It's almost like her role went back to where it was before. You know, when, and, you know, and when, uh, when Joey Rasmussen went down, guess who had to shoulder most of the load? Hannah Helvig. She got a lot of sets during this whole year, uh, probably more than she expected. And then all of a sudden she gets moved to the right and is genius over there. Great move by the coaches, I thought. And McKenna Ross as well, just coming up big time. Yeah. I mean, she really has turned it on. Completely a different player from when she walked and on. Nice to have Brooke Van Sickle back in the lineup <laughs> as well. Yeah. Well, let's talk more when we come back. We'll look forward to the postseason, the regular season. How Hawaii took care of business. We look forward when we return. Welcome back to the Heineken Post Game Show. Let's take a look at the upcoming schedule. It is brought to you by Sports Travel Hawaii. And from here on out, it's nothing but tournament time. The NCAA tournament starts roughly on December 6th. It could be on the 5th. It could end on the 8th. It, ju it just depends where Hawaii is sent or if they host and what days they are selected. So there you see it's just postseason from here on out for the Rainbow Wahine. And that's a good thing. But you look at the last two years for the University of Hawaii, they've been knocked out in the first round two years ago against Illinois, last year by Baylor. How far do you think this team can go this year? I think a lot of it depends, of course, on the seeding and where they end up. I think if they are home, their chances are really good of making it out of this first and second round and into a regional, something that we haven't seen in a number of years. But I think a lot will, again, depend upon who gets sent where. Again, I think they will be home but I just would not be surprised if they're sent somewhere else. Baylor beating Texas is a big thing that happened earlier this week. That will help Hawaii's cause. Even though Hawaii lost to Baylor, the fact that they played them, that will help their RPI. And again, you have to just look at this week and next week, those matches that are happening 
with those other teams that Hawaii plays. Uh, hopefully that those teams will continue to do well to keep their RPI where it's at. By the way, the selection committee doesn't get together and announce anything until December 1st, so a week from this Sunday at 3.30, it's, I believe, on ESPNU. So there's some time between now and then for things to happen in Hawaii's favor, Chris. Yeah, I don't think they'll move too much. I think they might move up a couple spots if, if you know, University of Washington wins, if, if, uh, if UCLA wins, for example, if University of San Diego wins, key teams win, it'll help Hawaii. But I don't think they'll go up much more than maybe to slot number 10. I don't think they'll drop much more than like 14. So I still think they'll stay in the top 16. Hopefully the NC2A will keep their word and have the top 16 teams host. But it is really more than just the art. It, it pretty much is the RPI, but it also is a little bit more. And I can't think where the NCAA saw what happened tonight. And they say, my goodness, 10,300. They've won, what, 11 or 12 in a row. They've only lost a couple of, I mean, how do you deny Hawaii? How do you deny Hawaii? And I think that was a little pitch right there from Chris McLaughlin. <laughs> Just NCAA member, committee members, are you watching? This is real. This is the real deal here in Hawaii. Sold out crowd. Yeah, and hard to argue with 24 and 3, a record like that. Yeah. I mean, you're going to look at other records. And the thing about this year, if you look throughout the country, I mean, we've seen many years now where there's one dominant team and there's maybe a second, a Nebraska, a Penn State. Uh, but really, this season, we've seen, we're seeing upsets galore. Every weekend, there seems to be another team that's upsetting another team. So I think it really is anyone's game. It's really who's coming on strong at the end of the season. So it's, it's going to be a very difficult position for the selection committee uh, to really have to decide who are the top four seeds in this tournament when you look down to it and then how it all stacks up after that. Do you guys think this year the Big West will get three teams? Does Cal Poly and UCSB join Hawaii this year? I think they've made a case for it. They, yeah, yeah, I mean, certainly they have. I mean, you look at their overall records. I mean, their records are good as well. Their RPIs should reflect the fact that they should make it into the tournament. Uh, they do have some bad losses, though. So I think if there's any room, uh, the Big West might not be able to get three. I think they'll get two. But I think they deserve to be in there. But if there's another bubble team that's from a stronger power conference, they might go with that team as well instead. Yeah, I agree. I think that the, uh, the third team from the Big West is going to be a little bit shaky. But... Uh, I'd love to see that third Big West team get in. It has been a good conference this year. They've had significant non-conference wins to make the conference look good. So I, I hope the third team does get in. It's been a great ride. It's not over, but it certainly has been fun. We have no idea what's coming up next. Nobody does. But we'll all find out together on December 1st. That'll do it for us here this evening. Special thanks, as always, to our Spectrum Sports crew. They are the best in the business as Hawaii takes care of business, wins in three over Long Beach State, and claims the Big West Conference title outright. For Chris, for Ryan, for Lisa, I'm Scott. Until next time, we bid you aloha and a good evening from the Stan Sheriff Center in Manoa.